Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Rondell's Unpopular Opinion Podcast. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to the podcast. And if you are returning, welcome back to the podcast. Either way, please make sure that you not only like this video and give it a thumbs up and leave a comment, but feel free to share the video if you care. And more importantly, make sure that you are not only subscribed to the channel, but that you hit the notification bell. So every time a new podcast comes up, you are made aware. So this podcast is essentially going to be focusing on Miss Evelyn Lozada and if many of you who do not know who Evelyn Lozada is she is one of the original cast members and longtime cast members of the Viacom VH1 hit TV show Basketball Wives Evelyn had so much of a huge following from that show she was able to earn her own spin-off show called Living Lozada which was actually on the Oprah Winfrey network many people know of her um, actually uh, working with, uh, I believe his name is Tony Gaskins and Ian Levon Zant. And as far as like, you know, being life coaches and all that good stuff, right? Now, today is Sunday, November the 24th, okay? And I'm going to say probably like around Monday of this week, I came across this post from Evelyn via Instagram, right? And I'm looking like, okay, that definitely does look like she's getting baptized, <laughs> okay? It kind of really threw me off a little bit. Um, So I checked it out. She uploaded two pictures in one simultaneously and the verbatim of the caption read, this journey, though personal, is also about staying true to who I am, who he is, emphasizing capital letters, and what truly feeds my soul with the heart emoji and the praying hands. So I kind of really got the gist of that when she said he in capital letters that was putting emphasis on he meaning the most high meaning God. And I was like, okay, right? So... I believe like the next day, right? I was on Instagram again, okay? And I saw that Bola Alert had an exclusive on Evelyn actually getting baptized. So I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Well, all right, let me go and check this out. So I'm going to post the link to the article in the description of this video so you guys could check it out because this is a pretty like a lengthy you know, exclusive. And I'm not going to go over it verbatim. She did say a lot to whomever interviewed her. Now, people.com also uh, reported on this. And I don't know whether or not they snatched the exclusive first or, you know, I don't know who's basically regurgitating it. Okay. I don't know if it's people. Or I don't know if it's a bull alert. Now, she, like I said, she did state a lot. And in the interview, she did state that Kanye West was definitely uh, what provoked her and her inspiration to embark on this, you know, spiritual journey. She states that, you know, she's done with premarital sex. She states that she is staying celibate until she gets married again, because we all know she was already married before. And she's pretty much very much so serious and she believes that she is a work in progress. I'm going to read an excerpt from the interview. I'm not going to read everything, but this is basically part of what she said verbatim. She says, um, as a mother and as a woman, someone, somebody that's trying to accomplish things at life, I have to know to do better with how I respond to situations. This season, meaning the basketball wives, whenever we start filming that is it's supposed to be at the top of the year it's going to reveal the true facts of me getting baptized and really wanted to do it for god in the right way that's one thing she did say so what she's revealing also in that in the interview is is that basketball wives does film six months throughout the year so they get six months of filming six months off right now they're in the off season they go back to filming at the top of the year which could be as early as january so we could expect basketball wives to come back you know by at least the spring or summer okay so 
she also stated that I want to feel like I want to be an example. I want to be able to speak to young girls from where I come from. I want to be able to inspire other people too, especially young girls, young women, to just be really loving on themselves and honor themselves. Your body is your temple. She also added that she recently informed someone, quote unquote, that Jesus did not die on the cross for us to be side chicks. That is what verbatim of what they're saying. Okay. Um, yeah. So I pretty much want to know what you guys think about this. If you already have heard the story or if you're just now learning of this. I'm just going to give my opinion on it. Okay. Because opinions are like assholes and everyone has one. So I'm going to give you mine and this is what I believe to be fact or what I perceive or how I take this, okay? And many people may not like it, but I really don't give a shit and I'm going to tell you what I kind of really think, okay? So here's what I'm going to say, okay? And I'm going to reiterate that it may not be something that everyone wants to hear. Now, I find it very odd that every single time, or it, it's becoming a pathology, that every time Evelyn Lozada gets into a very mixy situation or a situation that she feels is detrimental to her image, okay, that she feels the need to do damage control. Now, the situation that happened with Chad Ocho Cinco a few years back, after that, she was warranted to, I'm guessing, to just, you know, seek Evelyn Lozada's help and seeing, you know, where she went wrong in regard to that tumultuous dynamic between her and Chad, okay? That was like a two-part special of Iyanla Fix My Life, right? So we see that, and then all of a sudden, after that, she's working with the same network that basically set off the Yana Fix My Life series, okay, the that that whole production. She's working with the Oprah Winfrey Network to bring about Living Lozada to basically showcase her and broadcast her in a different light, only for her to go back to VH1 a Viacom um a Viacom pro production. Okay. And then she goes right back to the same platform that put her basically in the negative light and negative connotation that she was primarily in okay so when she went back to basketball wives i said this is not going to be good for her it's just not it seems as though every time shit gets hot for her she embarks on some type of spiritual journey and i'm not saying that we all don't you know fault and we all basically don't make mistakes and seek to a higher power and seek to embark on spiritual journeys or whatever right we all we all are a work in progress that part is true okay but i feel as though evelyn does things okay or she is basically doing things for damage control reasons and to sustain and that's what it's honestly truly about and like i said that is my opinion you don't gotta agree with it maybe you feel as though she really is trying to work on herself and that's great that's fine that's your opinion however how i'm seeing it is is that after this very tumultuous season of basketball wives and all the receipts that got pulled and all the nasty things that were said and um basically what transpired leading up to the reunion it just seems to me that she knew shit got thick, shit got hot, especially when, you know, a petition was definitely going around with signatures to basically get her removed off of the show. And people were so done with the show that they were looking to get the, the show canceled in its entirety. People were just sick of it after what transpired between Evelyn and OG. I believe that this is a part of her you know, campaign of damage control. If um you guys haven't, you know, saw or noticed, you know, after, you know, she said what she said on the reunion through her IG and through her Twitter of how she's not a colorist and how she basically, all she did was prove that she does not understand the difference between race, ethnicity, and heritage, okay? Or basically, she doesn't understand the difference between race 
ethnicity slash your heritage and your nationality, okay? Because in her mind, being Puerto Rican is an ethnicity or basically not really ethnicity. Being Puerto Rican to her is a race, okay? Which it, it's not, okay? It's, we all know that it's not. We know that Puerto Rico is a commonwealth of the United States. However, I have been to Puerto Rico, just to segue, I have been to Puerto Rico and Puerto Rico is definitely its own nation, okay? You can go to Puerto Rico and the only thing in common with the United States and Puerto Rico is the currency. I have been to the hoodies of the hoods in PR and a lot of Puerto Ricans don't even speak English, okay? Door missing off of the, the, the front of the house, it's real out there, okay? It's real in the battlefield and I'm talking about prior to the hurricane, but I digress, in her mind, you know, Puerto Rican is a race. So she definitely has some work to do on herself. That we can all agree to. So I truly think that with the things that she said on the reunion, trying to do damage control there, with the things that she said on Twitter through her tweets of her trying to prove that she's not a colorist by the way she interacted with OG, through her Hollywood, definitely through that Hollywood Unlocked interview, definitely through that Hollywood Unlocked interview, that was the epitome, that was the cherry on top of her campaign of damage control. That At least that's what I thought. And now I'm hearing the story that now she's quote unquote embarking on the spiritual journey and getting baptized, okay? I'm going to be real and keep it all the way 100 Okay, I believe that this is going to be her storyline into the following season of Basketball Wives that's going to come in 2020. I'm calling bullshit on it, and I'm sorry, but it is what it is. It's how I feel. We'll see over time if that really is the case. But I believe as though she is going to use this, this spiritual journey, and she's going to use it as her narrative and her storyline for the 2020 season of Basketball Wives. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that OG is also set to return, okay, to Basketball Wives. So we're going to see, you know, like I said, things got really nasty, really ugly. Lawsuits were basically initiated. It got really heated. So again, I feel as though this is a ploy to basically segue from that terrible, terrible season of Basketball Wives with her acting a damn fool. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it and I'm standing in it until I basically see otherwise. But until then, that's what I'm seeing it for. And honestly speaking, I believe that Basketball Wives has ran its course. I believe this past season that just passed showed us that. I believe these women are too grown to be doing the things that they are doing, to be acting the, you know, to act the way they act. You know, it's just honestly, it's just not good. And I don't know when Shawnee O'Neal is just going to wake up and kind of really smell the roses because I thought that she learned this lesson years ago and that she was basically going to transform the narrative of the show. But it just seems to be that she just keep giving us the same old, same old. And honestly, we're sick of it. We are, we are sick of it. But drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you really think that Evelyn is really embarking on this spiritual journey and this journey of celibacy only to, uh, you know, do it for basically clout for the next season of Basketball Wives and for it to be her narrative and storyline? Or do you feel as if she's really trying to really work on herself? Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about this. And I will check y'all in the next one.